we just become best friends? Yep. Scotty K and Brett Mega. It's true. Scotty and I are, we are best friends. And one of my best friends is leaving the show. Scotty announced that he was leaving the show. He's going back to Chicago. He's been a long distance dad for five years and is going back to Chicago to be with his son. A lot of people ask us everywhere I go, man, people are asking me, one, how am I handling it? And two, how did you guys even become friends? How did the show even start? And when you start doing the show and you talk to people every single day, sometimes you forget to like kind of recap where it all began. And that's a really cool opportunity as we get it. This is your final week of show. People are usually pretty confused by our friendship. That's too. true too. Yeah. They're like, I don't, they're like, you guys are such good friends and you work together and you spend all this time together and you always have each other's back and it's weird. Yeah. And we're like, why is that weird? Like they just don't have that at work, I guess. Or, We've said this I don't before know. on the show yeah. too. Most morning shows, if you're listening to morning shows, they probably do a great job. I'm sure they do a great job, but they just probably don't get along. Yeah, there's and that's a just lot the, of that. That's just the truth of it. I would feel like it's probably like, I don't know, 80% of them, 85% yeah. of them just don't like each other. And mainly because you work so closely with people. Yeah. And what was the, so what year was it, Brett, that, what was it, 2010? 10, okay. 2010, yeah. So 2010, so not, you know, a little, uh, but just about nine years ago is when we really first met, almost 10 years ago. Yeah, it was when really? I was graduating college. I actually started as Scotty's intern at a radio station in Chicago. It was called Kiss FM, and Scotty was the nighttime DJ, and you didn't go by Scotty K back no, then. You had <laughs> a big funny. radio name. You were Special K. I was Special K, the night the, the party nighttime guy. guy. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I was named that from uh, Can't Hardly Wait. The people said I look like Seth Green. You remember that yeah, movie? Yeah, so that's that, true. So Special K stuck with me on uh, through like my radio care, career in Chicago. Yeah. And we did. We, we did. We had a lot of fun on the show, too. Um, do you want to tell the one story of how you love this story? I, do. even tell I know you want to tell it. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't remember the exact bit of why we were doing it. And now I feel awful because you're so much better than, than that scenario, but we've done weird things and it was something about kissing people's butt to, uh, yeah, to win tickets, I right? Actually, you just got to like kiss people. I do people. remember the do bit. You? Yeah. So it was, be I have a, I have a better, better memory. memory than me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was because Kanye had just actually stole the mic from Taylor Swift and uh, you said that. Kanye needed to kiss some ass to get back in people's good graces after taking the mic from Taylor Swift. So Kanye's uh, Taylor Swift moment was also a big moment in our lives, too. Yeah, so we, to win tickets, someone had to come up to the studio and literally kiss Brett's, Brett's butt. That like, would never fly nowadays, by the way. No, no. Yeah. Especially with the with, In the climate with, we're in, climate, yeah. Yeah, that would never fly. Totally different, but it was funny. But multiple people, <laughs> uh, guys and girls, came yeah. up and... Literally got down to kiss my ass. His bare butt. There's like was three great. three people. I felt like three people. Yeah. So that's where it all started. <laughs> no. And then so after that, Brett, uh, being as talented as he is, you actually you went off and did your own shows in uh, the Pacific Northwest, and you did a night show, and I think they promoted you in like a week or something, or Six like an months, hour yeah. or something. They offered me ten dollars <laughs> an hour to do a night show in Spokane, Washington. So yeah. I moved to Spokane, Washington, did the night show, did a morning show for two years, and then they offered us an opportunity. Uh, Scotty and I to team back up together. Like, well, you know, all that ass kissing bits you guys were doing was so great. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should do a radio show together in Atlanta. And so we teamed back up in Atlanta. Yeah, that was a nice way. So we, and we went to Atlanta it was an interesting situation. So that was when I had left my son. That was the first time I had yeah. moved away. And you had just moved to Memphis with your wife, who you've been long distance with for eight years. And now you guys, you're going to, Hey, I know I just moved here, but we're going to go take this shot in Atlanta and see what happens. So you moved your whole family. I moved away from, you know, my son. And so it was a really interesting place for you and I to go. And like, it was us, man. We had to, we had to have each other's back and we had to, and, and we always did. I mean, we stayed close throughout the whole, that whole time that we were apart too, but uh, yeah. it was a really interesting comeback together because it was a really pivotal point in both of our lives. Yeah. Uh, here's an interesting story about Atlanta to un like, I don't know, to pull back the curtain. Sure. The, they hired Scotty and I to do the, the morning show. And pretty early on, you could tell that they didn't like the show. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. it just didn't connect with them. The management didn't like it. We also had it's, new management. So the people that originally hired us weren't there that's anymore. That's true, too. Yeah. So like they didn't they didn't really understand the show. And I don't know what it was, but they, I definitely didn't think they liked me. And they didn't want me really on the show a lot. And Scotty would fight for me to be on the show. And they kept trying to pull me away. And we would get into battle after battle and battle and argument after argument. Like, no, this is the way the show is supposed to sound. And we believed in it. And two years into it, 
we went number one. Yep. It was like almost like a Howard Stern moment. Like the ratings had come out and we had the number one and show pig in Atlanta. vomit kept telling us, that's what they call it, Howard Stern. Yeah. The, 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 the suits. The management hated, hated us. It, yeah. And they said, you know what? We, we're glad you're number one. And they fired us. Yep. We finally went number one. They said, that's great. Pack up your crap and leave. 30 days before my wedding, yep. I had gotten fired. I had just asked Scotty on air to be my groomsman at my wedding, one of the people that stood up next to me at my wedding, and now I knew I was going to be jobless as I finally was going to get married, and we had no job, nowhere to go, and that's how I got married, and they fired us in Atlanta. Yeah, now in Atlanta, so our company that we work for now is based out of Atlanta. Cumulus yep. is based out of, out of Atlanta. They knew of us and they did not like that we had a lot of success against you know some of their bigger shows in, in the city, but we had a really good relationship with them and uh, they we, you know, were talking, they're like, might be an opening in a couple of places, don't know. And really what it came down to is people started talking about there might be an opportunity in Dallas, there isn't really a job there. And we said, well, what do we got to do? And they're like, well, it's really up to them. They're in Dallas. And so we booked a flight. Yeah. Our market president, his name's Dan Bennett. And uh, he was a little bit apprehensive about taking on another morning show on this radio station. And so we had booked a flight. I remember this conversation with my wife so vividly. I looked at the flights and they were $183 and we had $191 in the account. And we got paid in three days. And I told my wife, Katie, I said, hey, there's only, we'll only have like nine bucks. Like when we're all said and done, like eight, nine bucks. Are you okay with that? And she said, go, go get yourself a job. Yep. So we booked a flight Yeah. and we were supposed to have a 20, we booked a flight for a, tw- a 15, 20 minute meeting. With, well, we didn't have a Dan. meeting yet. We booked flights yes. and then we emailed him and said, Hey, we're coming to Dallas. Right. And he said, uh, what you are, uh, I can spend 20 minutes with you. Right. So, <laughs> so we, uh, we did that. We booked a hotel. We got, we got a rental car, uh, and we drove down here and, with that 20 minute meeting turned into a two hour meeting. And two weeks later we had contracts. Uh, it was the complete opposite situation. So I brought up the situation that Atlanta just did not get the show. They did not understand what the goal was right. for the show. And I it was the complete opposite with our market president who was Dan Bennett. I've never met somebody in the management position that he is in that understands what the goal of the radio show is, which is to connect with people and to put as many listeners on and to give back to the community and to take chances. And nobody have I felt like has believed in us the way he has. Yeah, in our radio career, everyone felt like we were the outsiders. People were, you guys are doing things differently. He was like, I love that you guys are doing things differently. And he always appreciated that. I think something really relatable is there in everybody's job. There's a lot of people in management that are not leaders. Yeah. And Dan is a leader. That's why when we first got him, we called him Good Dan. He's yeah, good. He's true. the best Dan we knew. Yeah. So, and he is a great leader. So, uh, and that's, you know, one of the things that's interesting about me saying, you know, leaving the show, one, we did fight re- and work really hard to get here. And then everything through, uh, we, I, I've, we've had a lot of support, you know? So I never wanted people to feel like I was turning my back on that, you know, and that support that we've had. And then it was ultimately just about putting my family together at, at that point. And when I made that decision, um, you know, I didn't make it alone, Brett. You, after you hear in this whole story, obviously, you know, Brett and I have zero secrets from each other. So anytime anybody has ever said, uh, well, you know, I don't know, don't, don't tell Scotty. You're like, you're not going to tell Scotty. Like, yeah. It's going to happen. Um, I mean, you were obviously the first person to know. And when we had the conversation, the first thing you ever said, and you said it over and over and over, you said, I just want my friend to be happy. Yeah, man, I could tell you were li- living a, like a split life. Right. And at, at a certain point, you need to put it and make it whole because that's what happiness comes from is being wholehearted. Yeah. And, and people always ask too. you know, ultimately we we're talking about why, how we got here and where our friendship is and, and how we are as, as humans. Um, people ask all the time, you know, how Brett's doing and what's going to happen to Brett. And one, I know Brett's going to be fine because I knew it from the beginning. You're one of the most talented humans oh, thanks, that I've ever met. But also the fact that like the bottom line is you just, we just care about each other. Yep. So yeah. Okay. You know, the show may not work. I may not get a job, you know, in Chicago, who knows what's going to happen, but we're still going to be friends. Yep. Still got, we're still going to be a team. We will still be friends. And I think the the other thing with this whole story is Scotty doesn't have a job. He's taking a leap of faith. And how hard it is to leave because the listeners who listen to this show every single day have become like family. Yep. Yep. So we appreciate you guys. That's how this show got put together.